So my project is focusing on the protein 5-lipoxygenase and 5-lipoxygenase activating protein. And basically, they associate to arach oxidize arachidonic acid, which is the first step in leukotriene biosynthesis. And so both these proteins have been crystallized, but there isn't much information about how substrate binds or how they exactly associate in order to oxidize arachidonic acid. And we're proposing using hydrogen deuterium exchange as an alternative to crystallization in order to see the interaction and see how arachidonic acid binds to these proteins. I'm interested in looking at the regulation of cell survival and glioblastoma cells, specifically by phospholipase D, which is a lipid hydrolyzing enzyme that creates phosphatic acid from phosphatidylcholine. The reason that we're interested in looking at survival in glioblastoma cells is because we notice that when you stress these cells out, specifically looking at serum withdrawal, you see an increase in PLD activity. And when you inhibit this activity, the cell viability is compromised. So the focus of this project is figuring out why cell viability is compromised following inhibition of phospholipase D. Well, this is a project on macrophage stimulation. We did um, stimulation with two different ligands, uh, one for the TOL4 receptor, one for a P2X7 uh, receptor, and as well did them together. Out of the genomic uh, analysis as well as a uh, lipid analysis, we found some patterns that suggested some further experiments with phospholipase inhibitors to try to uncover any crosstalks we could between the glycerophospholipid and the sterile subsystems. So we're interested in the pathogenicity behind urinary tract infections. And so they're a very common infection and uh, they're, all, they're bacterial in nature. And one of the key attributes to the uropathogenic bacteria's virulence is that they can form biofilms. And so the mechanism of biofilm formation is pretty well understood, but the proteins involved is, uh, hasn't been as well um, elucidated. And so we're using moldy imaging mass spectrometry to look at the distribution of protein species within the, bio, the biofilm biomass of uropathogenic bacteria. My name is Brittany Allison. I'm a fifth year grad student in Jens Myler lab, and I work on the computational design of protein ligand interfaces. So um, in computational chemistry and protein structure prediction, what we're trying to do is uh, see if we can predict what residues are necessary for binding a small molecule. And how I play into that is, and what this poster shows, is a benchmark to see if I can recover native-like um, interaction. So this project is studying the role of a specific receptor tyrosine kinase, EPHA2, in lung cancer. Okay. And we're trying to find new ways to treat lung cancer that is resistant to traditional chemotherapeutics and current targeted therapies. And so what we've done is um, both knock down this receptor um, using genetic models and also using a small molecule inhibitor, we've inhibited it and shown that um, both in vitro and in vivo that we are able to see uh, tumor cells dying. So it's quite exciting for us. Okay. So my project is focused on Maria Sine, uh, the natural product shown here. It was isolated off the coast of La Jolla, California. And our lab is focused on the total synthesis. We aim to make a natural analogs and to determine the minimal pharmacophore, what part of the molecule is actually active because they found this compound to be um, selected for the human colon carcinoma cell line and kill cancer cells. So we want to figure out what part of the molecule is active and make uh, different analogs to improve the potency of this compound. The dimer species, three different conformations. But my focus was the trimer and tetramer. We acquired them from Bayer, and what we are looking at was eye mobility. If you can use eye mobility coupled with mass spectrometry. Enzyme that depends on a metal, those inhibitors inhibit it. So it's, you know, okay. no, non selective. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a okay, you know, we are knocking out lipoxygenases, so it could be, but. Okay. My name is Katrina, and I'm working on the development of a spatially multiplexed eye mobility mass spectrometer. And so, so far in my work, I've developed this electrospray ion source. It's an eight array 
then there's a heated desalvation block with capillaries to go from atmospheric pressure down to 15 torr in this first ion funnel. And then this first ion funnel is isolated from a second one, uh, pressure-wise. So the second ion funnel is at one torr. And then we go through an aperture array into the ion mobility drift tubes. And this will be at about four torr, pressurized with helium. And then the detector array is 8x uh, Faraday plates. And after this stage is complete, we'll be interfacing to a commercial QTOF. So we'll have a full eight-channel ion mobility mass spectrometer. We're looking at um, oxidative damage to lipids um, that result in the formation of these reactive aldehydes. Um, these can adduct proteins at exposed nucleophilic sites. Um, together with the Liebler lab, we generated a massive inventory of all the proteins um, that are covalently modified by this molecule um, in response to oxidative stress. And while finding the proteins themselves is easy, um, finding out where on the proteins they're modified, in other words, the it spe specific amino acid sites of modification, is much more challenging. And that's the only thing that can tell you the true consequential nature of the adduct. So I chose to look at this PIN1 molecule that has a variety of very important substrates. Uh, one of these is uh, lysine 27 of histone H3, which is a major, major uh, area of research right now. It's a more realistic um, approach to this. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. We're studying a protein kinase called CAMP-K2, which is activated by binding of calcium called modulin. And I'm using an EPR technique called DEER to understand how the en uh, enzyme is activated through binding of calmodulin and ATP and how that uh, causes conformational rearrangements in the uh, regulatory domain and the catalytic lobes of the kinase. So the PET imaging is, um, is extremely valuable for um, uh, imaging cancer, especially. So the FDG is one of the areas that um, they use um, the, the glutamine transporter one. So there is two major other um, transporter, which is called SLC711 and SLC105, which are the glutamine and glutamate transporter. And uh, these two transporter we focus to um, as a marker of um, uh, cancer using uh, uh, fluorinated uh, compound, fluorinated glutamine, and fluorinated uh, glutamate.